Hello, my name is Patrick Smith. I'm kind of new to YouTube, uh, but I was looking on there for gun training videos and um, found it very lacking. Um, I'm a licensed practical nurse. I'm also an NRA certified firearms instructor. I'm certified in the Nebraska State Patrol to teach the concealed carry course. I have degrees in physics and psychology. Um, and I wanted to do a couple of short videos uh, to show basic gun safety rules, um, to explain the different parts and, and uh, functions of uh, firearms, and uh, also to show you how to clear malfunctions with firearms. Uh, may uh, include some videos later on Nebraska law. Um, I haven't really decided yet. Um, but to start with, uh, first rule when you're having any kind of uh, firearms uh, instruction is absolutely no ammunition in class. Um, you can see that all the firearms I have here are unloaded. Um, any ammunition you seem to use is going to be dummy around. It's plastic orange plastic safety ammunition. Uh, absolutely no live rounds in the classroom. Um, what, you have, what I have holstered here is a, a blue plastic on it with a piece of plastic. This is not a real firearm. Um, I may occasionally point this as a camera, but I will not point a real firearm at you. Um, first rule of safe gun handling is to always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Second is to always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And the third is to always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to, until you're ready to use it. Um, so the first, always keep the gun pointing in a safe direction. Common sense will tell you what direction is a safe direction. Okay? Might be 45 degree angle, which is called the ready position. Okay? Um, might be straight down, might be straight up. Uh, it's always away from people. Uh, on the range, it's going to be down range. And in the classroom, it's going to be the front of the classroom. This is where I stand. This is why I'm very interested in no ammunition in class. Okay? Um, second is to always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. You see my, my finger is always going to be indexed on the frame here. Um, a little bit later I'll go over a five count draw. Um, and your finger should only be on the trigger after you come up to the target and your eye switches focus from the target back to the front sight and then only then should your finger end the trigger. Okay? And then keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use. Um, now, it, it's true that you're supposed to store firearms separate from ammunition. Um, but if the gun is there for self-defense, it needs to be loaded. It's not being stored. It's there for self-defense. It's ready for work. Now, if it's your deer rifle and you go hunting once every two, five years, ten years, and the rest of the time you're sitting in it on a shelf or in a gun safe, that should be unloaded because that's stored. Again, if it's then in your nightstand for self-defense, it needs to be loaded. Um, when you park your car on the curb on a hill, what do you do? You turn your wheels toward the curb and you set the parking brake. Why do you bother turning your wheels if you're going to set the parking brake? In case the brake fails. Uh, a mechanical safety on a firearm is the same thing. It's a mechanical device that can fail. If you rely on mechanical safety to prevent an accident, you're going to have an accident. Again, if you rely, if you rely on mechanical safety to prevent an accident, you're going to have an accident. Um, these three safety rules, you follow one of them, 100% of the time, no one will ever get hurt. Say uh, you have a firearm pointed in an unsafe direction, okay? okay? Your finger's on the trigger. You accidentally pull the trigger. If there's no ammunition in the gun, no one gets hurt, okay? You have your finger on the trigger and the gun's loaded, but it's pointed in a safe direction, no one gets hurt, okay? If you have a point in an unsafe direction and the gun's loaded, your finger's not on the trigger, no one gets hurt. You have to break all three in order for there to be an injury. This is why shooting is like the world's safest sport. Pretty easy for me to understand that dodging a 250-pound man who's trying to tackle me is a lot harder than keeping a piece of metal pointing in a safe direction. Okay, I'll take a minute here to go over the decock lever. Um, this basic design of this revolver hasn't changed in about 250 years. Okay? Um, they had revolvers before they had case ammunition. Uh, you seal the, you pack your ball and powder and everything in there, and you seal it with a wax plug. So revolvers have been around for about 250 years. This basic design. Okay? Um, this Ruger I have is not a model 1911, but it's based on the 1911 design. The 1911 has been around since 1911, so about 100 years. Um, it's a very good design, very, very tried, very true. 
Now, in 1911, you load it, put the magazine in, you back to slide, and the hammer is back. Okay? On 1911, you will leave it, hammer back, you put the safety on, and you hold it just like that. You cannot decock a 1911. The only way to decock a 1911 is to pull the trigger and ride the hammer down. Okay? Which, this breaks our safety rule. Okay? You don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Putting your finger on the trigger when you're not going to shoot anything is not safe. You're inviting an accident. So on 1911, you pull the slide back after you've loaded it, hammer's back, you put the safety on, you holster it, hammer back. And that's absolutely safe. It's called condition one. Um, well, police officers were used to carrying um, revolvers. About 1960s, you had guys coming back from Vietnam. They were familiar with 1911, like the same automatic action. So you had police forces starting to carry this, which again, hammer back, safety on. And this made people nervous because they didn't understand the function of the weapon. Um, this is how this weapon was designed to operate. But they see somebody carrying around a cocked and locked gun, and they think, oh, this guy's a psycho. He's looking for a fight, walking around with a hair trigger. He wants to shoot somebody. So they, they, they put a decoy lever on there. Now, this is the, the first design they came up with. Um, they combined the, the decoy lever and the safety. So on this gun, okay, got the decoy lever here. You push the decoy lever down, the hammer falls, and it stays down for mechanical safety. So people, augers that are used to carrying revolvers start carrying these, um, so they decock them, and they come out of holster, and they pull the trigger, and nothing happens because the safety's on. And hopefully they figure out enough so they put that safety off in time to save their life. Okay? Uh, the next generation um, would be the PM5DC, decock only. Um, on that firearm, which uh, I have one downstairs, I'm not going to run out and get it. Um, then uh, you push the decoy lever down, and it springs back up, and there's no mechanical safety. Okay? Um, that is not unsafe. So again, modern firearms, won't, they will not fire unless you pull the trigger. They will not fire unless you pull the trigger. Um, so decoy, safety off, holster it like that. Absolutely safe. Um, I'll go over real quick. Um, mechanical safety. I'm going to touch on that just in another second more. Um, now, when you decock this weapon, the hammer falls. What you think would fire the gun? There's a there's a block in here that, as you decock it, it recesses the block into the gun. Okay. And the way this functions is the hammer strikes the block or the inertial firing plate. That strikes the pin and that fires around. So by recessing this block into the weapon. The hammer doesn't strike the block, so it can't fire the gun. Instead, the hammer strikes the frame and doesn't fire the gun. That's how a decock lever allows the hammer to fall without firing the gun. Okay. Now, I love doing this. I love handing people this revolver. This is a Dan Weston 357. And I love telling them to point to the safety on that gun. And I tell them, well, there isn't a safety. In fact, there is. That's the same safety. There's a, there's a plate here. The hammer strikes the plate, and that fires the gun. So if by chance you have a cock and the, you drop it, the hammer falls. If the trigger is not depressed, the plate falls away, and the hammer strikes the frame. It has the same safety as a semi-automatic. Okay. So both these guns, any gun I have here, any gun, modern firearm manufacturing in the last 100, 150 years, has this kind of safety on it. Um, now, if you have a direct firing pin with a firing pin that actually matters on the hammer, on a revolver, and it actually goes through a hole in the frame in order to strike it, um, that may not, but it still might have a plate in there to prevent the pin, the firing pin, from extending all the way and actually striking around, so it still can have a passive safety like that. Um, but a firearm will not fire unless you pull a trigger. Had a guy argue with me, what about black powder guns? How many of you are going to carry a black powder gun for self-defense? Ridiculous. We're not going to cover it. Um, so that's the basic pistol parts and functions. 